If you're not familiar with curler beads, they're a special type of bead. When you iron them, they fuse together and they create different designs as you can like see back there. And the plan I'm actually showing you right there how to create that one. Recently, I moved and when I moved, I got a lot of my designs. Hey, hater! Why you gotta hate my video? Why you gotta park? You're my biggest hater, right? Said yes. I had to toss a lot of my designs away because we were trying to move with very minimal stuff and um, I started to create some more designs for my bedroom and when I was doing that I was like I want to make sure I make a YouTube tutorial showing you guys to help maybe um, give some of you guys some inspiration, some ideas for your house or as a gift. They're really fun to make and they're really easy to do. If there's a certain design that you want to create all you have to do is Google image it um, and just search it. So like if you want to do Link from Zelda you can type in Link curler beads and more likely you'll find an image and you can go based off of that image or you can create your own design. Creating your own design is a little bit harder and more time consuming. Um, usually all the designs I do are just something that I googled image and I created based off of the image. I'm not very good with creating designs from the top of my head. I don't have the patience for it and I just I suck at it. There are quite a few tutorials already on the internet and YouTube of the Piranha Plant but I decided to share it on my YouTube channel like I said to maybe inspire some of you guys. If you like the video please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up there. It's dust and I'm allergic to dust. But anyways, give the video a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be having a Batman vs Superman tutorial pretty soon for you guys. I need to dust this room. Anyways, that being said, let the video begin. Let's get started. So the very first things you're going to need are pegboards. These are going to hold the perler beads in place. They have little pegs that are coming out and they hold each individual perler bead. The bead colors you're going to need are black, white, red, a dark green, and a lighter green that kind of leans toward the lime side. So when I create something using perler beads, I like to create the outline first with whatever color perler bead I'm using. Usually that's black, so that's what I did here. I used black perler beads to create the outline of the plants and the veins of the plants. You need to make sure the plant has a stem that is long enough to go into your flower pot, so that's why I added a few black rows on the bottom of the plant, and you need that so that the plant stands up, because if you just like don't add a stem at all, I mean it's not going to sit in the flower pot correctly. After I've done that, I start going through the rest of the colors so I move on to white, red, and then the greens. And I just like to go in order of colors usually so I'll get all the black perler beads done first and then the reds and then the greens and then the blues, whatever I'm doing. I like to get done with one color and then move on to the next color. Now to iron the perler beads, you're going to have to use either parchment paper or wax paper. I think parchment paper is more popular. I'm not the best at the ironing part. So you take your iron, you use whatever setting you want. I normally use the hottest setting and you start ironing it out. Now a good way to tell if the perler beads are sticking together is if you can kind of see it through the parchment paper and the ones that you can't, well, they're not totally fused together. So you can see now these colors are fused together because you can see them showing through the parchment paper. It's kind of just like sticking there. I don't know if you can see it well, but any place that you don't see the perler beads well through the parchment paper, chances are it's not fused together with the other beads just yet. You can then slowly remove the parchment paper and do it very slowly because some of the beads might not be fused together. So when I slowly lifted it, you can't see it, but there was a few white beads that weren't connected yet to the rest of the plant. So I have to lay the pa parchment paper back down and iron some more. And that's why you like, I gotta emphasize you slowly peel the paper up because if there's a lot of beads that aren't stuck together yet and you lift that paper up too fast, it's gonna make all the beads go everywhere and you're gonna have to fix your design. When the beads are all fused together, you can go ahead and peel the design off of the parchment paper. It might be hot, so you might want to wait a few seconds. I normally just get too impatient and I peel it off right away, even if it burns. Moving on to painting the flower pot, I used a lime green color that actually came in some like paint kit. I used an acrylic paint and then to actually paint the flower pot, I used a makeup sponge and I just dabbed the paint on because Painting clay like this with a paintbrush, it leaves like too many streaks behind and I just don't like the way it looks so I just prefer to use a makeup sponge and just like dab it on to the pot. A piranha plant I made a couple years back, the pot I used was a cardboard pot and worked so much better like painting it um, than these clay pots. But the clay pots are inexpensive. I got three for a dollar at Dollar Tree. So I've got a pre-painted one. You want to make sure you paint the inside so people don't see that the inside is brown. And then you're going to use a piece of foam. It could be styrofoam or floral foam, which is what I used. And you place that inside of the pot. You want to cut it down so it fits in the pot. And then you put the piranha plant through that. And that's going to help the piranha plant stand up because if you don't have something like that, it's not going to stand up. It's just going to like fold backwards unless you make a few plants and then glue them together and then it'll be able to stand up but if you're just using one layer of perla beads it's gonna fall so to dummy up the bottom I use some cotton balls and I just kind of you know rip them a bit with my fingers and I put that on top of the foam that way I don't have to use a bunch of brown perla beads to fill in the area so it looks like dirt um, perla beads 
they're not expensive they're inexpensive but when you're buying a lot they're expensive so that's why I just prefer to put the cotton balls on the bottom so I don't waste all my brown pearl beads and then yeah you just fill it in with the brown pearl beads so it could be the dirt and that's how you make your very own piranha plant out of perler beads. It's a lot of fun to do. A plant took me about half an hour to make, and that's partly because I was on the side of the plant, not in front of it, so it was a little bit more hard for me to do. And all the characters I've ever made, and the things I've made, I've made off of reference pictures, off of Google images. I'm not the best at perler bead making and designing, so I wouldn't say, you know, follow everything I did. It's all original. No, I've all, like, I've Googled it and I was inspired off of it. So anyways, with that all being said, give the video a thumbs up if you like it, and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm gonna see you guys pretty soon with a makeup tutorial. Take care, bye.